whenever you bet, bet Fred. This is Andy Pirouar for Boxing Social, and I'm deloy delighted, I should say, to be joined by the Geordie Golovkin, <laughs> Lewis Richardson. <laughs> Lewis, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm all good, thank you. It's been a while since we last caught up uh, in Birmingham before you fight there. Just tell me about what's been going on since and your camp, getting ready for this European title fight. No, yeah, getting ready for, for a hard fight. Plenty of sparring, plenty of training. Just locking myself in my room every night and just keep myself to myself. It's about as good as it gets, you know what I mean? So, not much really, but just taking over. Now, previously, in our last interview, you spoke about those sacrifices you've had to make and every bo boxer has to make. You know, when you see, like, oh, this is probably my first experience of seeing all the boxers together, all the... Uh, promoters and everybody involved in the fight and the organisation of it just together in one hotel when you see everybody going out doing bits and pieces whereas you're very much keeping yourself locked away focused on your fight does it ever frustrate you a bit? No because that's just you know like everyone's got different ways of dealing with things haven't they whereas I just like the every fight I've had hotel room bang I'm locked in there for a few days staying there just chill otherwise, otherwise like to walk out and about like hustle and bustle so just what you like but I just think I like to stay in the room keep my head focused on the job and I don't want any distractions and I don't get any So what do you do when you got these couple of days away from fight night you're in the, the hotel which all the other fighters are in what, what are you doing just to keep yourself occupied? You know there's <laughs> nothing really do you know what it is it's funny how you say that but I was down Joel Gallagher's a long long time ago when Scott Quigg was there and he had said uh, he trains his mind to be bored and I know that sounds stupid but that's what you need to do sometimes and I always put that in, like always focus on what you're talking about you know like but when you eventually get up there you do you know like you're in your hotel room you're all bored but it's like the sacrifices you need to make and you know it's 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 paying off and lie down and watch telly and watch rubbish on the telly that you would never usually watch but that's what you're doing you just keep your mind focused on the job you are keeping your mind focused on your job like you just said European title fight on Saturday night, another step up for yourself, your rise continues. Just talk to me about that and the Pater and Patera and what you know about him. I, I don't know nothing about Patera personally. I'll let my team deal with that and do you know it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a hard fight to look good. I know that sounds like oh what do you mean but he's got his sort of style, he, you know he's gonna he's gonna run away, he's gonna be on the back foot, he's gonna try and steal rounds and it's gonna be one of them where it's gonna be hard to look good but we we think we can get him out then we'll try and prove that tomorrow. Do you think it makes it a bit more difficult for yourself knowing that these past few foot well, since you've been with Eddie, you've been just knocking everybody out in the first couple of rounds and there's just been this expectation around you of becoming a bit of a knockout merchant. So does that maybe add pressure to you and make you feel like you don't necessarily want to chase a knockout in this fight but you also want to try to make the impression that it's the more levels you go up you can continue to do that? Well, it's, yeah, like you say, but it's hard at this. Like, obviously, this is a new level for us, so we'll find out what we're like on Saturday. But the likes of Patera and that, they, they're coming with that, oh, this kid can punch a bit in this. So we're going to make sure we're not going to trade. We're going to make sure we're going to keep out the way. So that's even making it harder with the expectation of, oh, Ritson, let's knock him out. But when you've got a per, like an opponent who's going to run away, not get involved, not try and get knocked out, then, like I say, it's going to make it, it's going to be hard to make you look good. But, I mean, win, knock out, the team's happy with it. Well, what, what are you doing? You know, we're just going to keep winning our fights and we'll get where we're, we're to where we want to go. If you have to try to predict Saturday night, then what what type of result do you envisage it being? I know you're going to, you know, you're going to say you know, you'll know you see yourself winning, but do you see it being that knockout? Do you see the first few rounds? What do you think? Do you know what we've said? We wouldn't be surprised if we come back after six rounds and we're 4-2 down. That's just the way that we think the fight might go. Uh, he's going to be on the back foot, he's going to run. He's, he's going to have to throw plenty of punches and uh, we're going to make him work and you know if we'll come back after six rounds we're four two down we've said that's we're, we're, we're looking at that and we, we think we can take him out later on I know you'll be very fit going into this fight but just going off the back of that and you're saying you could be after you know four two down after six rounds that power that we've just mentioned do you feel that going into them later rounds you'll be able to maintain it and you'll be able to continue to put the pressure on him to try and look for those big punches 100%. I mean, if you ask me, Coach Neil, who takes on the party, he'll tell you I get strong as the rounds go on. And, you know, no one's like seen that yet because obviously everything's been done so quick. But we've been more than confident for a long while now that we can do 12, the 12 rounds, you know, at our pace. And our pace is a high pace as well. So, you know, it's like people are saying, oh, uh, you know, you'll ask a few opponents of the site to stand and trade. Well, they haven't actually, we've just forced them to do that. You know, if you watch Highland the first two and a half minutes of the first round, he was running, running, running for his life, really. 
and then he just he couldn't he couldn't do nothing but trade. Scott Cordell, he come out, he, he traded, Joe Murray did. It's just a style that we've got. And we know that Patera's gonna try and use the ring, but we know that we'll end up getting him. Just picking up and I get something again then, you know, you've just mentioned this quick Roy. So how are you managing those expectations, especially because I've seen the support you've had this week and it is phenomenal. You know, the Geordie's just getting behind you and I was actually getting a taxi over to the um the way in earlier and I was having a conversation with the driver and I was saying to him, you know, everyone in Newcastle, when they see someone, especially in sports, trying to make something of themselves, everybody backs you, whether they follow the sport or not, they're behind you. And what, how are you managing that expectation that you've built of becoming a superstar for Newcastle boxing? No, well, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm laid back, you know, I, I'll, I'll never see myself as a, a superstar or a, you know, it was only a few months ago, I was still had a 54 play Toyota Yaris driving about, you know what I mean? So. It's, I'm one of them, I'm, I'm, I'm just laid back and you know it's nice for the Newcastle to be like behind us and, and it's, it's, it's a good feeling but at the same time I'm not going to let it weigh on my shoulders, you know it's like, you know you win or lose, you know if, if I start losing then that might start fizzling out, you know so we're going to just make sure that we keep winning and we'll just keep the Newcastle and if we keep selling out like we have, Eddie can't go anywhere else but keep coming, yeah. Something I wanted to ask you about this atmosphere is one thing I'm really looking forward to hearing. What was it like last time, Matt? And what do you expect it to be like this time? Well, obviously, it was only 6,000 in the last time and nearly blew the roof out. I, I couldn't believe it, me, when I first walked in. I was saying, like, obviously, we'll say, if you watch the ring entrance of mine, the first 10, 20 seconds, I don't know where to put myself. You know, it was that loud. I was thinking, oh, what's going on here? And then I just had to embrace it. And, you know, this time there's an extra 3,500 people in there. It's just going to be absolutely, it's going to be crazy. How do you enjoy the moment in them situations? You're in your hometown, you've got everybody come out to see you and you've got to stay focused on the biggest fight of your career. But it, you know, if you want them nights to keep happening, then you've got to win though, you've got to keep focus on that. You know, like if I get, you know, like my, my dad my Neil said, don't get involved in the crowd thinking I'll, I'll go take Patera out as fast as I can because that's when the mistake's happening. You've got to keep on the job and if you want to keep selling the arena and keep the, the support getting bigger and keep the fans being as rowdy as what they are, we just need to keep winning and that's what we're going to plan and do. Keep on mentioning winning, you come away again with a victory on Saturday, what what are you looking at then, what in terms of levels, you know, especially if say you was to get an early knockout again, the pressure would be on you from fans, not saying that you'd give in to it, but fans and others in the boxing industry would just expect you to go up another level, you know, but how? what do you see coming for the future yeah. after Saturday? Well, I think uh, the Europeans already got a man the challenger, uh, Petit from France, Manuel Petit, I think he is, he's called. So the winner will have to fight him. So, you know, and we want to keep all that European title. We don't want to win it, then go, right, we're done with that. We know that we need to have a good few fights against European level fighters and, and then move on to the fringe world levels after that. But it's all right seeing and doing it. We need, we need to go out there and, and like I say, keep winning because that's, that's the major part of it. You know, if Eddie's going to keep coming up, yeah, we need to keep winning. You know, we're, we're not daft. We know as soon as we lose or we lose again, then, you know, it's, it's the hype train's over. Do you know, like, and Eddie will stop coming up here, so we're not daft, we know that, we know it's a business and we just need to keep our head on the game. So do you feel like then you're a big part, well you are a big part, but the most of the pressure is on you to not just pick up results but to continue to show, show these signs of progression to make sure Eddie does keep coming back to Newcastle to give the fans these shows? Yeah, definitely, you know I was saying it, I said it in the press conference, I wasn't trying to be cheeky about him, but... You know, if you ask every, everybody, Josh Kelly's more of a London boy now. He lives down in London, you know, that's where he lives and that's where he trains. And he's been on the big shows down there where, you know, I'm, I'm a homegrown North East lad. I'm, I live in Newcastle, I live in Forest Hall. Everyone sees he's on a day to day basis. And yeah, it's, you heard Eddie on that card yesterday, you know, this, this card wouldn't have been happening if I wasn't fighting for the European title. So you've got all them lads on the under card that you are sort of, you've got the pressure to keep. If I lose on Saturday, there's no one from the North East on that under card apart from if Glenn Foot wins where they can sell out that show like we have and it's, it is a little bit of pressure but that's, it comes with the game doesn't it and that's what we've just got to take on the chin. I talked to him about the undercard obviously Foot Davis Jr, Dave Allen coming on, Anthony Fowler, Josh Biwatsi, you know talk to me about the rest of the card. The, the Glenn Foot and uh, Davies fight will steal the night, that's, that's 100% like everyone will tell you that, what a fight that is, I've been mean, spoiled with Glenn loads of times, uh, I've spoiled with Robbie a few years ago at the JB camp. It's just going to be fireworks at. And the, you know, Robbie says, oh, Glenn can only throw the kitchen sink. Glenn can box a bit, you know, he's, he, I, I, I'm, he can't box as good as Robbie, I'll give him that, but he can't box a bit. And it's going to be, I think the first cut rounds might be a bit slow, but I think after that, I think that'll come alive. So I'm going to take it you are backing Glenn, obviously a local lad himself. 
I've got a black I'll, I'll, I'll black Glenn against anyone you know he's a noodle, and uh, another North East lad and he's a good friend of mine now in the boxing world and like I said before he's trying to get into the pictures room they need it. no that's not happening so uh, and I, you know that's no disrespect to Robbie because I get on with Robbie very well he's a good boxing lad and you know I if you had mentioned anyone else in the light welterweight division at the minute, Robbie was fighting, I would probably back, back him to beat them. But it's just the fact that he's fighting Glenn and Glenn's in the North East like that I'm picking him. Another big character on the card in Dave Allen. What do you know about Dave and what, what are you looking forward to seeing him on Saturday? I'm looking forward to seeing He's been pestering us. I'm giving him a ping pong for the last two days. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been trying to kill myself and make weight. He's ping pong. I mean, no. But uh, no, he's a big character. And you've seen him at the press conference yesterday and everyone laughing. And probably not the big fight that people would have wanted to see him in, but you know, you'll deal with him and he'll probably fight Lucas Brown next, won't he? So, happy days for him. Now, just away from this card and uh, Saturday night, there's a few things going on in the boxing world that you want to get your opinions on, starting with uh, Billy Joe Saunders and uh, failing to get a licence because of a failed drugs test for his uh, defence with Demetrius Andrade. What were your thoughts on that? Did you think that was a fair punishment and that he should have, he probably eventually would have been stripped from the looks of it, but he decided to vacate in the end? Well, it's hard to say, I mean, I seen Eddie do a bit where I filmed him and he's saying it was the right decision. But for Billy, it's hard. You know, there's that many like companies now doing the drug. Like, I mean, I'm sure it was okay for him to debate to do it in the UK, wasn't it? But it wasn't okay to. So it's hard if you're just going off the U card one, thinking, oh, that's just going to be the same as the American one. Then he's taking it. Then you can't really blame him, can you? You know, like, and it's hard. I, to be truthfully honest, I think it was more of what he's been doing. Apart from the drugs, you know, like the, the videos that have been going around with him doing stuff, I think that's got a massive part in it. And I think, to be fair, I think they've jumped on the bandwagon with him and sort of went, oh, this will ban him, will strip him, when really I think it's got more to do with what he's been doing, like outside of the gym. So that's my truth. You know, I think it's very harsh what they've done to him. But then again, you've got a lot of people saying that he should have been stripped for the video that you had put out with that. Not that I've seen it because I haven't seen it personally, but a lot of people were commenting saying that he should have been stripped for that. So. They've gotten him for one of them, haven't they? So it's a hard look for him because he deserves to be there. He got a great win against David Lemu in Canada. And it's, it's not a very nice way to be stripped, is it? But that's what's happened. And we've also seen these past couple of days um, rumours that Khan Brook's been agreed at 147, but Amir Khan's uh, insisted on this hydrate, rehydration of £10. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you agree with that? or? No, I don't agree with it. If you're going to fight at 147, then you fight at 147, don't you? You, you shouldn't really be bothered what he's getting away then I think it after so I think that's just a way of Khan trying to suck him of all his energy and strength you know I mean we were seeing against Errol Spence when he had to do the £10 check wasn't it and he, he was great for about four or five six rounds and it just sort of fell apart from didn't it and that'll be with a £10 it's it so I like Khan as a fighter and I think he's really exciting to watch but I think that's just a bit of a bit of a dirty trick in my mind like so and we're also waiting on news on December 22nd, what either Dillian White, who will be fighting names of Ortiz, Derek Chisora and Dominic Brazil being thrown about. What for you would be your preference out of those three to see Dillian go in with? It would be Dillian, or it would be Derek Chisora, but I wouldn't say it was pay-per-view. Sorry, they're both, if they end up watching this, don't you <laughs> know what I mean? But I wouldn't say it was a pay-per-view fight, but obviously it's the money that they've both been owning, earning other fights that they've got to put on to make it happen. Uh, Ortiz put on a quite good show against Wilder, didn't he? But no one's really bothered about him, man. They want, they want the Dwight and Chisora and the winner of that will probably end up fighting, fighting Joshua in April, won't it? So I would prefer Chisora, but I wouldn't prefer it on pay per view, I know that. I know Eddie's going to watch his back yeah, thinking, yeah, what are you doing, Lewis? Yes, he is. But that's a, it's a boxing opinion, isn't it? you know, <laughs> I'm not the businessman. He, he, he works the numbers. If there's any man that can, Eddie can, can't he? That's what he says. So. And uh, he, he, he's the best in the business is anyway when it comes to the business and comes so he knows how much money that'll generate and do you know I'm probably saying this and they'll put a pay view off I mean the first fight was a cracker wasn't it and probably it'll probably do well so no one listen to me and, and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well Lewis I know you got a shoot off so thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. No, no problem, pleasure as always. Whenever you bet, bet Fred.